You've addressed the part that the law is important, but your actions are just as important. So if you find yourself in a situation where there are questions right now, what can you do? You've addressed everything about existing law, the current status, the law today. So now we'll hopefully leave you with potentially what we touch. That maybe might provide relief for a lot of people. So first, the government has already taken certain steps already in spite of the debate that's going on. So Emmanuel's gonna address that, and then we'll move on to the last thing. I know there was a problem when I figured I had to follow him. Like, <laughs> <laughs> how do you follow that? I mean, what do you do? <laughs> anyway, um, what I'll try to do today is just address what the government, what Obama especially has done to you know, provide some relief you know, as they, because one thing you have to understand is it's difficult to pass laws. Congress takes a long time to pass laws. Show of hands, anybody here was born after 1996? <laughs> <laughs> anybody has a kid that was yeah. born after 1996? <laughs> okay. See, all I'm trying to do is establish that, okay, the, 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 the law we're operating on, the law the innocent is talking about, and, and everybody's talking about, is a really, really old law, right? We're talking about the last, the last, this is 1996 Immigration Reform and Immigration Responsibility Act. That's the last time Congress was able to pass comprehensive immigration reform. Why? Because it's tough. You know, you got Republicans, you got Democrats, you got fighting. You know, they, a lot of law, a lot of laws were suggested you know, to, to reform immigration. This is an important issue. You know, it affects millions and millions of people. So you say, okay, we need to have current law that reflects current thinking on this issue, current, you know, current patterns as far as you know who's coming into the country, who's leaving, why they're coming, why they have, you know, why they want to come. But it's hard. It's hard to come up with, with law that's actually comprehensive, that actually covers everything, that actually provides relief for everybody. So. Thank God for most of us, Obama was elected, right? So the Constitution reserves law, the passing of law to Congress. Congress is the only person, the only body that can pass laws. But the executive has limited rights to pass certain what we call executive orders. What's an executive order? It is it's essentially the president saying, listen, this is a big issue. This is a very important issue. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to step up. I'm going to go up, bypass Congress and provide relief and pass a law. You know, once you call it a law, it looks like the president is actually violating the Constitution. So that we, really, it's really more an order. It's really more an executive order saying, "Hey, listen, this is what I want to be done." I know it. I know this is not the, this is not the the, the, the most permanent and the most efficient way to get it done. But you guys are fighting. Congress is going back and forth, you know, Republicans are saying one thing, Democrats are saying another thing. Oh, these people want these laws, the other, the other camp want, wants these laws. So it's like, hey, if you keep doing this, nothing is ever going to get done, right? So this is what I'm going to do, I'm the president, I'm going to issue these orders. You know? So what are, what are some of the benefits, what are some of the pros of having executive orders? The first thing is, you know, you don't need the approval of Congress, so it's more, it's efficient, it's, it's quicker. Uh, so you can say, okay, uh, while you guys are debating back and forth, I can just unilaterally you know, or by myself issue this order, and it, it becomes law essentially. So that's one of the that's the first thing. Next benefit is a temporary relief for illegal for illegal immigrants. Now, what what that does is, let's say you are you are you 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 about to be deported, and and the only way you don't get deported is if the law changes. What an executive order can do is it can stay that order. It can give you time. You know, so you can say, listen, your, your deportation is pending, but it's not going to be immediate. We're going to defer it for a year, two years, three years, whatever you qualify for. So that's a, that's a good thing. It's, it's helped a lot of people. It's helped keep a lot of people in America so far. Third uh, benefit, it targets on popular aspects of law. So for instance, if, if you have an immigration law that, that you know, really, really is a, is a huge advantage to kids, you know, kids or older people or a certain class of people, you can say, listen, I'm going to target that specific aspect of the immigration, immigration law. Maybe it's not a comprehensive thing. Maybe it doesn't change the entire law, the entire universe of the law. But it changes that specific thing that affects that specific group of people. So you can actually address their concerns. 
Another benefit is it's a pretty good tool. You know, it's, it's no surprise that listen, you know, these things I've done during election years and that kind of thing. So, you know, it, it helps the process. It, it, it helps your candidacy. It helps your process, and it helps a lot of people. So you can use it as a political tool to get people to buy into your, your ideas, buy into your concept, so you get more votes. Uh, what are the what are the disadvantages? What are the cons of an executive order? First thing is it's, it's, it's short term relief, like I said, you know, and it's not a permanent fix. So why why would it provide relief for now? The problem still exists, you know. So for instance, you you may you may be deferred for two years, but at the end of two years, the problems that you had, you know, like they had like they said before, still are still there. If your status hasn't changed, you still have to change your status. So it's not a, it's, it's not a, it's not a permanent fix. It doesn't give you you know, uh, it doesn't resolve your problems. It only defers it. It gives you temporary relief. Another bad, another con is it's not a path to the citizenship. You cannot get a, you can't get to become a citizen because an executive order says you will be a citizen. That's exclusively reserved for Congress. So all it does is provide temporary relief. Another con it's not amnesty. It's not immunity. I mean, that's self-explanatory. It, it, just because an executive order affects you, your, your circumstance doesn't mean you're. You know, you're immune from, from the immigration system. You still have to go through the process of regulating your particular circumstance and getting your, getting your, your stay in America legal. Uh, it can be reserved, but, you know, say Obama is, you know, Obama's on his last term, right? Say the next president is a, is a Republican. It, it, it didn't, you know, he doesn't like some of the laws, some of the executive orders that Obama passed. Guess what they do? They repeal it, it's gone. You know what I mean? So if you're depending on that status, you might, you might be in a really, really, really precarious situation because all of a sudden now a law that, would have, that, that was helping you stay here is no longer law because Obama's gone, you know? So it, it, it's, a, it's very short term, it's very limiting, so very, it provides a lot of relief. All right. Um, and, and there's some other cons I, I can talk about. Is like, there's limited funding for execution of them, you know, because normally the way laws work, Congress passes them, Congress allocates a budget, you know, to get them executed. The, the executive doesn't have as, as big a budget to do that, so it's very limiting in, in the amount of things they can do to make the law, and to implement the law. So, but that's, that's not a big deal. But, so let's, let's talk about the first of these laws that Obama has single-handedly made available to a bunch of people, and several of our people. The first law is called uh, Executive, executive Order Deferred Action Childhood Arrivals. Now, one of the things that, one of the laws that has been going through Congress for years, I mean, we're talking since the 90s and up till now, is what's called the DREAM Act. The DREAM Act was designed to facilitate children. It was designed specifically, you know, to, I mean, there are, there are other aspects of it, of, of course, but the main thrust of the law was, hey, you know, there are kids who are not, who are here because of circumstances that have to do with their parents. It's not up to them that they were here. It's not, you know, it's not really their fault that they're in this circumstance. So we need to help them. It's gone through, I mean, it's, it's, been, it's gone through the Senate, it's gone through the House, it's been, it, it, but it never passed. So what Obama did was say, say, hey, you know, this is really a good thing. I mean, in his own words, he actually, actually called it the right thing to do. So what he said is, listen, we'll pass this, I'll pass this executive order. The, the, the point of the order is, it's going to grant temporary relief from deportation for under, uh, you know, underage or undo undocumented youth. So what it does is, you know, certain undocumented immigrants under the age of 31 with no criminal background may apply for deferred deportation for two years and is renewable, and which will pave the way, you know, for, for them to have work authorization. Now you ask yourself, okay, that's great, you know, does that, you know, does, does that, you know, does that, does that apply to every child? You know, if you have a child who's who's in America. You know, who's, who, and, and you're not, you, he's here legally, you're here legally. Does that necessarily mean it applies to you? And the answer is no. You have to qualify, right? How do you qualify? There are requirements. The first requirement is the child, you have to, the child has to arrive in the United States when they were under the age of 16. Okay? So if you have a child who, who came here at 17 or 18, automatically they're barred. Okay? The next requirement, they, they, you know, they have to continuously reside in the United States for the last five year period, as of June 15, 2012. So that's again, you know. They have to be in school, or, have, uh, or graduated from high school, or join the U.S. Army. Now, again, the thrust, the idea is, as, as, as James said earlier, if you want to change the status of America, you have to, you have to, you have to, you have to provide a benefit to the society, right? So, 
if you're in school, if you join an army, you're a positive influence in society. If you just hang it out and you know, drinking and having a good time, you, you, America has no incentive to get your status regulated. So you, it, it's, you have to be doing something positive. If you're doing something positive, it gives them a reason to, to change it, you know, to, 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 it, it betters your, your, uh, your case to, change, to get your status changed. Uh, you have to enter without inspection before June 15, or, or lawful immigration status expires after June 15. Uh, you, you, you can't be convicted of a felony offense, a significant misdemeanor offense, multiple misdemeanor offense, or otherwise pose a threat to national security. Same thing, I mean, that has been echoed in everything everybody's been saying, you know. If you're in America, you want to change your status, please, 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 please stay within laws. And if you don't stay within the laws, you make it really difficult for yourself to change your status because that's almost invariably a condition. Regardless of what law it is, regardless of what executive order it is, if you're a felon, if, you, if, you, if you're a criminal, chances are you, you will bar yourself you know, from, from getting that status. Uh, you must be under the age of 31 and all that. Just have to go back to one point, one, please. Uh, Above the age of 15, unless in a remote seating, you must be under the age of 31 as of June 15, 2012. So if you're over 31, you're barred. Okay? So these installations are pretty, I mean, they're pretty clear. You know, but again, a lot of these things are subject to your particular case. You have to value the, you know, first of all, you got to satisfy every condition. It's very strict. It's very, 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 very regulated. You have to uh, satisfy every condition, and you have to make sure that it as it, it's the timing timing is of everything you know timing is important if they say you have to be here before the age of 31 and you're turning 31 and you have not started the process guess what you 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 will you will you you, you you you're not going to qualify if you have you had to be here before the age of 16 and you come here you, you came at the age of 17 or 16 and a half you're not going to qualify so it's very very strict and that's why you need immigration lawyers somebody who can help you interpret your facts and apply them to the case and make sure you actually qualify before you waste your time and money applying for these things. All right, so that law in and of itself, without spewing a bunch of facts, has helped hundreds and thousands and thousands of kids stay in America who are really just about to be deported. So that, <laughs> that law really, it really incentivized Obama. It's like, you know, this thing really works, you know? This, this has actually produced some good because a lot of people who, a lot of kids who are the ones looking sent back are still here, you know, so this is actually a positive thing. We can't just sit here and wait for Congress forever, so if it's, if it's working, guess what? You do it again, right? So he decided to say, you know, since that worked so well, how would try another one to affect another group, another group of people? So he came up with another executive order in January of 2013. It's called the uh, Family Unity State Side Waiver uh, Executive Order. What's, what, what's that? What, what's, what's the idea behind that? The, the policy and the, the aim of it is to keep undocumented immigrants who are immediate relatives of U.S. citizens united with their relatives, with their families in America. So if you're undocumented, if you're illegal, but you have family here, you're trying to get your status. The old law, the 1996 law, required that you go back to your country you know, for a three to 10 year span before you can get a chance to come back. But that's, that's a really, really long time to be away from your family, right? You know, and if you have kids, if you have a wife, you may have a spouse, that kind of thing, it, it takes away from that unity, from that family bond. So Obama's like, listen, maybe there's a way we can help. Maybe there's a way we can actually reduce the burden on people who have to go through this process, especially if the person who's trying to you know, help them is a US citizen, right? So. That you know, it allows undocumented immigrants to apply for a visa in the United States, uh, you know, to return to their home country for a visa. But since they've already applied for a visa here, it actually, you know, the, the, the time period that is that they're, they're away, it should, you know, it, it's actually been shortened to. In some cases, it takes weeks, you know, for some months. But as a general rule, the time is way shorter than what it used to be at the three to ten year to a ten year period. Now. How do you qualify? You know, how do you, again, a lot of these things, it's not just because it's, a, it's a, an executive order and it becomes law, everybody qualifies. You, it's very specific what the requirements are. You have to actually meet them. The first requirement that you must prove that being away from the U.S., from a U.S. citizen relative, would create extreme hardship. Now, you ask yourself, what is extreme hardship? Well, the Department of Homeland Security has, has not clarified what extreme hardship really is. It's no real definition. 
what they've said is that we look at everything. We look at the totality of the circumstances. We look at, you know, the, the entire glass ball and say, hey, what's in there? You know, how, how is your particular, particular case different from that case? You know, I'm sure they'll look at some of the facts that they've been looking at before. You know, how, how, is, it, how is it affecting you that you have this relative who's away? You know, now I can tell you from, like, and most lawyers know, terms like that can go to a lot of legal you know, random to figure out what it's, I mean, that could, that, could, that, could, that could be in court for a few years now. You know, but at least we have some guidance as to what that means or what that is. Uh, uh, you must, you must, you must, must be admissible only on account of illegal presence. Now, if you have all the grounds where you can be deported, you are barred, okay? That's important because it's, it's you know, you have to make sure that the only reason, the only one, the one reason of your inadmissibility is illegal presence, right? So if you, if, if there's any other reason why you are eligible to be deported, guess what? It won't apply to you. So that's important. Next. Uh, who, who's an immediate relative? Now, the, the, the good thing about this and, and is that they've, they've actually, the, the, the policy was actually intended to cover just a small number of people. The idea is, if this works and works well, they will expand it to other relatives. Now, so the media relatives has defined just spouse, parent, and child, right? So if you're if you're if you're an extended family member, it's not it's, it's not at least for now, it's not gonna it's not gonna apply to you. Okay. Is that gonna be revised over time? Chances are, I mean, the literature should suggest that that definition of media family will be extended over time. But for now, it's just spouse, parent, and child. You must be 17 or older. You must have, you must have an approved form I-30 or an approved form I-30, uh, uh, sorry, I-130 I or I-1, I-365. They can go into more details. These are, these are immigration guys. They can go into more details what those are. But it's, I can just going to give you a, kind of a little snapshot of what those are. You must have those kind of petitions in place in order to qualify for this thing. Um, you must have an immigration visa case pending with U.S. Department of State. Again, please send it right there. Um, you pay your fees, so you're good. You must be present in the U.S. at time of filing of waiver and present to provide biometric, biometric is in of prints and that kind of thing. You know, you must be around. In other words, if you're gonna, if you, if you want to do this, you have to be here. You know, you can't do this like from, you know, you can't do this for somebody else who's not here. Because if it's time for them to provide sick, you know, uh, uh, fingerprints and uh, you know, uh, that kind of biometric information, they have to be here. So you must be here to qualify. Uh, you must not be scheduled for a U.S. Department of State immigration visa immigration prior to January 3, 2013. Now, the idea there is, listen, if, 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 it's, if, it's, if it's prior to, then you're fine. If it's post, then you probably have a different, different, different category that you would fall under. So they want to make sure, make sure it's clear that there's a separation between whatever filing you already, you already undertaken and this filing. So there's, 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 so there's not. Um, you must not be in removal proceedings. And that's what you're talking about. If you've already, if you're already being removed because your status is, because you've violated some of the things they were talking about. You can't qualify for it. You can't qualify for for to stay here on the, under this under this law. Uh, and again, you must have no criminal background. Now, I'm, I'm sure it is no point beating that 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 that, that horse anymore because it's very clear. If you want status change, please stay stay up, stay with the law. Um, I mean, so that that's pretty much two of the main 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 executive orders that Obama has taken. That these, I mean, I, if, I, if you if you if you if you look at the stats, you will see how. These two laws have really, really affected hundreds, and th hundreds of thousands of people's lives. You know what I mean, so kids and adults. You know, because the hope is all these things will be incorporated in, you know, what we what we hope to be the new law if it, if it goes if it, if it passes. And for what the new law will be, for what the new law will represent, I will turn it over to the others to give you what the nuances of that law. Are.